the revelation of the book Revelation, part 10. I'm Professor Hannes Redenhuis of the First Assembly of Yafashua in South Africa, Victoria, Montana. Should you require any information or want to order some of my books which I've written over the last 23 years, uh, especially the handbook that we're using for this study, the revelation of the book Revelation, which is called the Two Keys to the Book of Revelation, uh, or otherwise, what is your God's name, or Israel's rapture, or you should require the restoration of the original sacred name Bible, the Rotten Arm Version, which is the uh, restoration Bible, which is banned in the world throughout 2020, 2005 by the World Council of Churches. It's not obtainable in any bookshop ever in the world, except you can find one in a second-hand shop, uh, otherwise I have a couple of copies that I can uh, give you a price on. Should you require any information, contact Pastor Rico, my wife, the watch app 0722-367-124, go to my, that's also plus 27 on the international number, or go to my webpage, https double point hyphen ya, y-a-h, V-A-H, ya, fa, small letters, dot C-O, dot C-D-A. If this is the first time that you are going to participate in the study, go to uh, 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 lesson one, or part one, and start from there. Very important to subscribe to the channel, so that you can get any notifications of any new studies. We have just... Started, also started with breakfast with Prof. Honest, uh, and there's a lot of people that uh, start looking at it. We are busy with the subject, who are the Nephilims? We do not associate ourselves with any of the following groups, any Messianic group, the Israel Vision groups, the Hebrew Roots movement, the Sacred Name movement, the Yah movement. We're not part of the Jehovah Witness movement. Uh, or affiliated to the Seventh-day Adventist Church or any church organization in the world. We are only a worldwide Bible study group. That's all it is. We are mainly using the ancient Hebrew sacred name Bayer Bible, the 1860 Bible, which was uh, originally translated by Dr. Joseph Briant Rottenham in 1860. It's called the Restoration of the Original Sacred Name Bible. According to this Bible, the name of Jesus was original Yafashua. The name of God was original Elohim or Hashim. The name of the Lord was originally Yafa. The name of the Holy Spirit was originally the Ruach HaKodesh. We refer to ourselves as Yafist, according to 1 Peter 4 verse 16, as was the disciples of Yafashua and his followers 2,000 years ago. I trust that this study is going to be a blessing to you in the wonderful name of Yahushua. Right, we're going to continue exactly where we left off last week. We were busy with Daniel, and I'm going to just refer to Daniel 12, verse 9 again. And he said, He's the angel. My hands, if I do this, it is in brackets. And he, the angel said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed the time of the end. My question is, are we living in the time of the end? Definitely. So whatever it seals must be revealed unto the bride of Yahushua. I don't think I need to explain anything else right now. Right. Now what I'm doing, uh, when you use the handbook, the two keys to the book of Revelation, it is numbered. And I'm going to give you, as we continue to follow it in the handbook as well, I'm going to give you the numbers which is on the left side of the page, it's quite bold, 1.2, the two keys. When studying the book Revelation, we find that for centuries, most Protestant, Charismatic and the Roman Catholic churches avoided the book Revelation. The question will be, why? Because it is part of the end time prophecies revealed in the end time. Before Yahushua or Jesus will come to call or parousia. The parousia is the Greek for coming or call. He's calling his bride home at the end of Revelation 3 verse 
22. Now what happens at the uh, Revelation 3 verse 22? That is where the seventh church age, <coughs> which is uh, Dan, uh, Revelation 3 verse 14 to 22, is happening. Now we are living in that time right now. It's also called the time of grace, where sinners can still be saved by the grace and the blood, the revelation blood of Yahushua. Uh, so how does this period of time come to an end? Time out. That's a sign for time out. What will be the time out for the book of, or the seven church age to be concluded? Such surely the coming of Yahushua for his bride. That is where grace will stop. After Yahushua has drawn away the bride, Barosia the bride, not the church, the bride, there is no more grace. Grace has abide. So what happens? People can only be saved by paying with their own life to be saved, and their souls goes under the altar. Revelation 6 verse 9. We'll come to that later on. So we understand the idea that or the scripture, the scriptures that we are part of the bride of Yahushua, not the church. Not the church. Because the church is going to Arpachu. Or they say they are going to be Arpachu, which is going to be a rapture. And that is only for the one third of Israel in the great tribulation. And they the church are not Israelites. There's no way. We already know that the book of Revelation is what? Is the safe. Containing the greatest treasure. I've explained that last week. We also know to be able to open this safe, the book of Revelation, we need two keys. One of these two keys will be the book of Daniel. We've got two keys. One is the book of Daniel. The other one will be the world history books. That's why the churches for nearly 600 or more than 600 years since Protestant, Protestantism originated could never unveil the book Revelation. You can go onto YouTube. There are hundreds of studies about the book Revelation. But not one of them revealed Daniel 12 verse 11 and Daniel 12 verse 12. They don't know how to open the safe. We need the two keys. One of them is the two keys of these two keys. is the book of Daniel. For hundreds of centuries, it was the mystery of these two keys which caused theologians not to be able to interpret the figurative speech in the book of Revelation correctly. So figurative speech as when Yapha al Elohim, which is God, He's talking about one thing, but he's referring to something else. That's figurative speech. As an English-speaking person, you should know what it is. Because of this misconception of scriptures, different Protestant, Charismatic, and the Roman Catholic churches, I say churches because there's different assemblies, interpreted the scripture to suit their own church dogmas and teachings. And this is what everybody in the world does. They chop and change the scriptures. Uh, to form their own theology. Um, uh, I normally talk about spiritual uh, in the, uh, uh, where they inseminate uh, a first, first piece of the scripture, a piece of the scripture and bring them together and inseminate them and what happens? Now they create a theology. It's not where they take the whole chapter and say let's work with the chapter. It's like a fowl, guinea fowl on the, on the farm. It's a bit, it's scrubbing around, picking up a, a bit of seeds here, a bit of seeds. And that's what's happening in the church world for the last 600 years. 1.3, the word must be sealed. The word must be sealed. To become part of the bride of Yahushua, which is Jesus Christ, it only happens through grace and the blood of Yahushua. Hallelujah. That's the only way that you can become part of the bride of Yahushua. The Gentiles and most Jews are not part of this elect group. There's three times in the, in the New Testament where it refers to the elect. One time in 1 Thessalonians 
it refers to the bride as the elect, and the other two times it refers to Israel, one third, the remnant of Israel as the elect, not all of the Israelites, only the elect, the one third or the elect. As we continue with the study, we shall find out the grace of Yahushua shall be offered to the Gentiles and later to the nation of Israel. As we continue the study, we shall find why certain prophecies in the Bible had to be sealed. This was a question for me for many, many years. Since I was a student of the Word, I'm still a student of the Word, although I'm a, of the word, although I'm a professor today with, with the big Bible college, uh, we still are students of the world because Yaffa reveals himself unto whom he will. So, so for, to understand this sealed prophecy, I could never understood why must there be sealed prophecies. Because the gospel of salvation is for certain people and a certain time. And this time and people has started 2,000 years ago when Yahushua was born as a human. Not when he was the baby, but after he was immersed by John the Immerser and the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, ascended upon him like a dove. It wasn't a dove or a white dove, like a dove. This sealed secrets, the Bible says, shall be revealed unto the bride of Yahushua, because it's all part of Yahfa the Father's salvation unto the bride. Most of the dreams and visions that Daniel was expected to reveal were a direct indication of the times we are presently living in right now. Daniel lived 270 years before Yahushua. So roughly 2,570 years backwards was the time of Daniel. And the visions that he saw mainly had to do with which is going to happen in the great tribulation with the nation of Israel and also the Gentile bride. Because there's a Jacob's bride, we will pick it up as we go along. There's a Jacob's bride, that is a Hebrew bride, which comes from the 12 tribes of Jacob's, his 12 sons. And we are part of the Gentile bride. Why? Because we come from the ten Gentile tribes, the northern Israeli tribes. We became Gentile tribes. 1.4, the figurative speech. What is figurative speech? Figurative speech is when the Bible is telling us something which is going to happen and not using a direct explanation, but rather using something else to explain the present or the past. The present or the past. The book Daniel and Revelation are situated with, are saturated with figurative speech, and for this reason, it was seldom in the past read or understood. Why? Because the true interpretation of the figurative speech could not be explained. If I think in 1979. Uh, I was a, I, I just concluded a three-year as a diploma uh, in, in theology, where after I became a pastor, a very young pastor. So, in that time, because I was interested in the eschatology for many, many, many years since I was a young boy, it actually uh, I was I was I was triggered by the book of Revelation. I wanted to know what's happening, and especially the book Daniel as well. Uh, and a lot of times I would speak to the, to the teachers and ask questions, and they wouldn't be able to ask them because they didn't have a clue what was going on in the book of Daniel and Revelation. 
And those years wasn't the time of the internet where you can go and at least get an idea by entering a certain subject. And although 99% of the stuff on the internet is, is lies, the internet is saturated with lies, spiritual lies, which the devil is using to lead people into believing a lie because we're living in the age of the great lie. So a lot of this information that and the questions I had couldn't be answered. Pastors that I spoke to in those years, the elderly pastors, they couldn't explain it to me because they just pulled up their shoulders and said, we, we don't know, we don't know. And that was not good enough. I wanted to know. And that's why it's 56 years that I'm a student of the eschatology. And I want answers. I'm seeking for answers all the time. And that's why my students, being in my Bible college, must never say they ever wanted an answer for anything and they couldn't get it. Up till now, through all these years, Yaffa al Elohim has supplied the right answers according to his words. In the last 600 years, specifically, most of the churches used the Bible to advance their own theology. And when you listen to people's theology, you will realize that, that uh, a lot of it is not scriptural. If you would say to them, show me in the Word, they can't show you in the Word. And meaning the Word, I mean the 1611 King James Bible, or the restoration of the original sacred name Bible. And this is why most of the figurative speech could not be revealed by the pastors of the past, pastors and priestess and reverence, because they didn't knew the figurative speech. 1.5, the first key to understand the book Daniel is to find the first key. If you want to understand Daniel, you need the first key, Daniel. We shall help to open the safe. While you are busy, with, we're going to work with Daniel. But first, because we need to see what is in Daniel, which is sealed up, and why. Because that which is sealed up in the book of Daniel, Daniel 12, verse, what is it, 8 or 9, 7, 8 or 9, is that what is going to open the safe, the book of Revelation, partly because we also need the world history books. To be able to come to the revelation of the book of Revelation, one has to compare events in the book of Daniel. Listen to what I'm saying. We need to compare the events in the book of Daniel with the figurative speech and certain events in the book of Revelation. They are compensating each other. They are running parallel. What, and, and the wonderful thing about, about it, when uh, Apostle John received at 59, uh, 95 AD on the island of Patmos, that was, that was nearly uh, five, six, 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 uh, 650 years later when he received it. That was after Daniel wrote about the uh, things that was written in the book of Daniel chapter 12, which was sealed up. Now we're going to look at the second key. The second key is the world history books. This is the most important key to be able to open the safe, which is the book of Revelation. This is where most, most Christians, Protestant, Charismatics, and Roman Catholic Church in the last 600 years has missed the object with the mark. Why? They never looked at the world history books. I will tell you what, we will in the book of Revelation, later on when we get to, Revela uh, when we get to the seven church ages, I will give you the years from that year, from 34 AD, uh, uh, Ephes uh, the, the Ephesians, the assembly of Ephesians, and Smyrna, Pergamos, and Sardis, Sardis. I will give you everyone exactly the year from where it began to where it ended. Now where do we get that from? I'm just giving it for example here. From the world history books. 
Because the exact thing that was said in the Bible, which Yahweh had revealed unto Apostle John when he was in heaven, taken up in heaven, exactly happened as it was told, as it was revealed, and as it was opened in the history books. When I look at the history books and I look at certain scriptures, it fits in not 99%, 100%. And as you will continue the study, you will find how easy it is to see where these scriptures fit in and how the history books of the world is actually opening the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation was always read alone or separately and therefore it was incomplete for many centuries. To most Protestant, Charismatic and Catholic churches in the world, even in this 21st century. Apostle John expresses himself in figurative speech while he wrote the book of Revelation on the island of Patmos, 95 AY, that's after Yahshua. It is this figurative speech that caused most Protestant and Catholic churches and generations and generations not to understand the eschatology in the books Daniel and Revelation. Listen to what I'm saying. Not understanding the eschatology. And there's another thing. What is eschatology? When I was in Bible college doing a three-year diploma in the theology, we didn't study anything about eschatology. Zeit in zero. All about theology. 99% of the churches into, in the world today, when you want to become a pastor, you're going to, start the, you're going to study theology for three years or four years or what? Two years, three years or four years. Theology is giving you insight in the Word, in the New Testament, partly in the Old Testament, very little in the book of Daniel, very little in the book of Revelation. It's all about church administration, and financial administration, and it's like running a business. This is what theology is. And then the life of Christ, and I'm using the word Christ, or Yafashua, uh, and also the miracles that Yafashua has done, and Apostle Paul and Peter, and the, the origination of the church, or the assembly of Yafashua, which is Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. This is what, this is what theology is. But when coming to the eschatology, they do not have a clue and that when you want to bake a cake, you need baking powder to add a teaspoonful to your recipe to make your cake to rise so it can be light. Without the eschatology, trying to explain the end time word is like not having the baking powder which is also the book of Revelation and Daniel. To fully understand the book of Revelation, one must compare certain events and periods in history and understand what has happened and how has it direct bearing on your lives in the present times in 2024. If we can understand the history, which is the second key to the book of Revelation, opening the safe. We need to compare certain world events or history with the word of Yaffa, not just by its own. You use it to use the 1611 King James Bible and the world history events to unlock the sealed secrets of the book Revelation. You can now say by proof, it sounds ridiculous to think that the world history books can open the book Bible. Did you know that NASA, who in America is, is an organization that does satellites and going to the moon and want to go to Mars, and, that they are using the Bible in the last 40 years as a guideline to certain events in engineering certain satellites? 
Can you imagine? Because they say there is certain truths in the Bible which they cannot find in the history of mankind and in the knowledge of mankind. So the Bible is making a difference even in Scientology. Isn't that wonderful? Atheists that doesn't believe in Yaffa or God is using the Bible as a guideline to get their satellites into orbit. Now I want to express that the world history books, you must listen to what I'm saying, has nothing to do with my salvation, but to understand certain events in the book Revelation, we need to consult the world history books. By doing this, it is possible to estimate our relationship with time. So the history books are going to help us to estimate time. Meaning, where are we on the timetable presently? I ask you, draw me a, a, a timeline. Where would you say we are right now in 2024? Have you got an idea? No, you won't have an idea. But if I quote certain scriptures and give you certain information in the book, especially in the book Daniel, that will guide us to the revelation of the book Revelation, you will fall off your chair. That's why I always say you must make certain you bring a safety belt or two with when you do the study. So you don't hurt yourself when you fall out of your chair. Because things that the church has missed for ages, for 600 years and more, is written right in front of us. But because we were reading the Bible with church classes, spectacles, we could not see what was actually written for the bride of Yahushua, because we were following the theology of the church. I don't say you must ignore your church, that's not what I say. I say just listen to what I say and investigate the word. And then you decide for yourself. Meaning where are we on the timetable regarding the event of Yahushua and his coming or his parousia for his bride and other figurative speech in the Bible. Understanding the real meaning of the figure of speech in the book Daniel and Revelation shall reveal certain secrets in the Bible which for six centuries were unknown to mankind and the church world, meaning especially the Roman Catholic Church. Because they were running already when Protestantism originated. They already existed for about 1,500 years. In real time, or let me just say it, in real life, during an engagement, when the guy is getting engaged to the lady, the future bride and groom will openly discuss their aspirations and secrets to one another before they get married. Therefore, in the same manner, we find that the word of Jaffa, our Elohim, which is God, contain sealed secrets, which must be disclosed to the bride of Jaffa, Shua, that is us, before the second coming can occur. The second coming of Jaffa, Shua cannot occur if the sealed secrets in the Bible are not revealed to his bride. He's coming for who? If he's the bridegroom, who's he coming for? He's coming for the bride. And he cannot come for the bride to take us into heaven if there are still sealed secrets. I say here that these sealed secrets must be unveiled unto the bride of Yahushua before the second coming can occur, where we as part of the bride of Yahushua shall be drawn into heaven in glorified bodies. Hallelujah. The bride of Yahushua must know 
everything. So when a, a guy and a girl is going to get married or engaged, they must reveal their secrets unto each other. They can't, after 20 years, there's suddenly a guy walking into and he says, How's the daddy? Hello, mommy. Do you think that lady's going to be uh, accepting everything after 20 years? The guy has not revealed that he had a son with another lady. But if he told her that before they got married, when they got engaged, she would have most probably said, oh, it's nothing because then he was still a small baby. Bring him. Let's raise him. But now after 20 years, it's a problem. And the same is going to happen with the bride of Yafashua and the bridegroom. The bridegroom and the bride, the bridegroom, must reveal any secrets unto his bride. And Yahushua being the bridegroom, us being the bride who are born again through water and the Ruach HaKodesh by being immersed in the name of Yahushua through the remission of our sins, we need to know every sealed secret. And in this study, over the period of time, we're going to discover every sealed secret. And it is your right, after I've completed the study, if there's one little tiny secret that which is sealed, which I've missed, which I did not touch on, you must bring it to my attention so that we can discuss it. I'm sure, after all these years being in the eschatology, I'm sure there's not one secret I will miss. Trust what I'm saying. There's a little chorus that says, Turn your eyes upon Yafashua, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Till next week, if his father's will, Maranatha, Yafashua is coming again. Hallelujah.